Let's go live now to Or Issa Shah, the head of research at the Israel Defence and Security Forum. Or well, thanks so much for your time. We heard there from Mick Mulvaney, his perspective uh, from the United States. Uh, but what is happening here? This is more than just Hamas. What do you suspect um, has gone on behind the scenes in the lead up to this horrific attack? Thanks for having me, Laura. Yeah, it's definitely the darkest day in Israel's history. I can certainly tell you personally that I was personally appalled by the scale and scope of this. And uh, just for, for your audience to realize, um, uh, we woke up in the morning to the sound of sirens. We assumed it would be just yet another round of, of rocket launching and rocket barrages, and everything would go back to be the same as it was. But then we saw horrific videos, and I'm sorry for being to, for describing to your viewers in such graphic terms, but children being tied up and executed in their own homes mm -hmm. and soldiers, soldiers' bodies being sabotaged. And we saw youngsters in nature parties simply ambushed and, and really a massacre and a spree. And we saw these horror videos and we ask ourselves, my goodness, this has nothing to do with territorial dispute, this solution or that solution. We're dealing with barbaric ISIS-type human animals here that have that have taken their inspiration from the Nazi regime, I suspect. Now, the, the previous reporter was absolutely right. In terms of, of numbers, it was equivalent to maybe 10 times 9-11 uh, in, in terms of, uh, in relative terms of population. And so Israel is, is shocked, but it is also, you know, uh, preparing for war. And mm. we saw the really uh, the airstrikes pounding the, the Gaza uh, facilities of Hamas. We saw how uh, Hamas is, you know, um, uh, it's, it's beginning to regret, perhaps. It's very audacious, uh, one bridge too far action. But we're also seeing the Iranian fingerprints, Laura, all over this this uh, Yes, step, or, this and what does that mean? Massacre. I mean, I mean, I guess you and many others would have suspected this anyway. But if you have confirmation, where what does that actually mean? What is then the reaction of Benjamin Netanyahu and the US? Well, I think as, for starters, we need to throw out the window all of our old concepts and our and our conception that we can feed a hungry lion. Uh, we saw, uh, we tried strategic containment with Hamas for years now. We know that Hamas has taken over the Gaza Strip in 2007. Okay. And ever since, we've been trying the method of, you know, appeasement. And at worst, we saw these rounds of conflict where, let's be honest with ourselves, relatively sterile fighting with the Air Force carrying out most of the, the attacks. And uh, we, we saw, you know, rocket barrages, um, you know, mostly intercepted by the, the Iron Dome system. Yeah. And we kind of dealt with that. And now you see the level of barbarism right on your doorstep. And you realize this is this is a whole different ballgame. And I think right now Israel has all international credit it wants to take bold action in Gaza and to eradicate Hamas, really eradicate this terrorist group called Hamas. But also, I would expect the Israeli leadership and the U.S. and the, really the moving statements of support from around the world, from Australia, mm. from Europe, from all over the world, even the Middle East, to tackle the Iranian regime head on. That would mean uh, the Iranian regime has planned this carefully. This is just for you to realize this is they were these Hamas terrorists were were trained and equipped and armed by Iran. This is um, yeah. this is. Nothing to do but, or just with Gaza. But what you're talking Gaza. about here, so. let's be real about what you're talking about. Uh, if war is declared on Iran, this is a whole different ball game. Right, and so I'm I'm confident that the Israeli leadership and the U.S. leadership would, would be responsible enough to know what to do about it, and we're not pretending as if there is an easy solution to this. All I'm saying is that uh, our old conceptions needs to need to be thrown out the window in face of these barbaric human animals. That would mean that the Iranian regime can no longer be uh, tackled in a matter of polite negotiations. Uh, this is a regime that has been exporting the revolution, so-called, or really outsourcing terrorism, around, spreading terrorism around the Middle East. We see it with Hezbollah, with Hamas, um, destabilizing the entire Middle East. We see the Iranian leader touting his achievement on Twitter, saying that the Zionist regime is dying, his words. And so, uh, really, there is no choice but to, to 
not to, uh, let's say our assumptions were not null and void, but they definitely merit reevaluation here. So Hamas must be crushed and destroyed, but we need to also to change our attitude toward Iran and the way it's carrying itself around the world.